Hello and welcome to another slide video from the Cornish Radio Amateur Club and this is part of the foundation series for the RSGB foundation examination and today we're going to look at conductors and insulators and this will be quite a short video because there's not a lot about it in the syllabus um, but here we go so it comes under section 3b of the syllabus and 3b1 says understand that in a metallic conductor an electric current is the flow of electrons recall that a conductor allows the electrons to flow easily and an insulator does not it also says understand that metals such as copper and brass are good conductors plastics wood, rubber, glass and ceramics are regarded as insulators. Understand that water is a conductor and that wet insulators can conduct electricity through the surface water. So this video is considering, uh, is um, continuing the um, uh, fundamentals, the uh, looking at technical basics and here we are We've looked at uh, basic symbols and diagrams. We've looked at multipliers and units. And now we're going to have a very quick look at conductors and insulators. So to understand an electric current, we need to look at uh, the atom. And the atom has a nucleus, which is shown in the center. And around the nucleus are orbiting negative particles, which are electrons. And if these atoms are arranged all together in a wire, for example, many, many, many of them, far more than this uh, animation shows, obviously, which is shown three here for illustrative purposes, um, then the atoms can uh, orbit the electrons. I beg your pardon, the uh, electrons can orb orbit the nucleus and if we put a potential difference across the wire, then the electrons, you can see them there, uh, flow from the negative to the positive. And it's important to remember that this is electron current flow. Now we must have a simple circuit for current to flow. Here we have a battery and a bulb, and if we close the circuit, then the electrons flow and again you can see that they were flowing from the negative to the positive. They're flowing out of the negative towards the positive. And when the circuit is complete then the bulb lights up. But when the circuit is interrupted the bulb goes out. So let's have a look at electron versus conventional current flow. In our pictorial animation there, we showed electron current flow going that way, that is anti-clockwise, electrons flowing from the negative to the positive. But conventional current flow, how we conventionally think of the current flowing, is from um, positive to negative. So there it is, clockwise. Now if we draw a circuit instead of a picture, so this is using the symbols that we've already learnt in a previous video, and these symbols we need to know for the foundation examination. We have a cell, remember the longer bar on the cell is the positive, and we can say that if the switch is closed, it isn't shown as closed at the moment, but if it were closed, then the electron flow would be from negative to positive, and the uh, conventional current we consider going from positive to negative. Now in the background series of videos there is a uh, video about uh, current flowing and um, you can have a look at that if you want to have more details about this. So why is it like this? Well it's for historical reasons. There's also a um, little cartoon if you like uh, in the background series um, about Benjamin Franklin 
he was a polymath that um, lived in America, and he's the one that's generally credited with uh, setting the convention of what is positive and what is negative. Now this is all uh, superfluous. All you need to know for the exam is that electron current flows from negative to positive, that conventional current flows from positive to negative, and that conventional current is the one that really counts as it's used in the vast majority of uh, diagrams and explanations. So looking at conductors and insulators. Conductors permit the flow of electrons, uh, like water, especially when it is uh, impure. Uh, distilled water actually is a reasonable insulator, but um, it only takes the minutest amount of impurity in to make it a um, conductor because it allows free electrons to flow. Metallic conductors, copper, brass, etc., they have free electrons in the outer shell and they allow electrons to flow easily. A good, con a good insulator hardly allows the flow of electrons. Plastic, wood, rubber, glass and ceramics are examples. Water on an insulator is a risk as it becomes a conductor through the surface water. And you will find some questions perhaps in the exam based about around this point. The, um, the exam question might be something uh, about a ceramic um, insulator when wet. You know, how should you consider that? Well, you should consider it as a conductor because the water on the surface will conduct electricity. So in between a conductor and a, um, a, an insulator, a material that inhibits the flow of electrons but does not stop it is said to exhibit resistance. Remember, resistance is the opposition to current flow. So just to conclude, we'll go back and have a look at the syllabus items that we went through before. Understand that in a metallic conductor, an electric current is the flow of electrons. Recall that a conductor allows electrons to flow easily and an insulator does not. Understand that metals such as copper, brass are good conductors. Plastics, wood, rubber, glass and ceramics are regarded as insulators. And understand that water is a conductor and that wet insulators can conduct electricity through the surface water. So you'll need to remember those substances, particularly metals, particularly copper and brass being conductors, and uh, the examples of the insulators, plastic, wood, rubber, glass and ceramics. And then finally, water is a conductor and can uh, pose a safety risk. So thank you very much indeed for that. Um, next, we will look at um, Foundation 3D voltage, current and resistance. And this is where we start to uh, look at Ohm's law.